Woman, won't you find your voice? Oh, oh woman, won't you find your soul? Woman, won't you find your voice? Oh, oh woman, won't you find your soul? In terms of the birth of my feminist consciousness, um, I've started to realize, listening to the stories of other women who understand themselves to be feminists or activists in any way, that I think some people are actually born uh, with a sense of wanting to change things because they think things are unfair. And I actually think I'm in that camp. So I do think I was born with a sense that things were wrong. Uh, and things that needed to change. So I've always been like this. Uh, I remember in primary school mobilizing because this boy had come to school with chocolates and he'd only given it to the boys and I rallied all the people in school uh, with a campaign calling him a male chauvinist pig. So I think, like I said, that you know, in a way it's always been there but my mother really shaped my feminist consciousness um, because she actually had used feminism um, as a way to help understand her life and her life history um, and lived it in a very embodied way so kind of raised us as children questioning some of these norms and questioning the restraint around our bodies around expression and what girls could do or boys could do and all of that and so and actively politically so I feel like also that that helped me I was nurtured by a feminist mother a woman who was explicitly feminist um, and I think that also helped create me to you know grow my politics I think African feminism is many things because both Africa and feminism are many things. But at its core, feminism has always been about an understanding of the world uh, and that the injustice in the world is a result of power and that that power is patriarchal power and its intersections. And so a concern then to work to dismantle that power and its intersections. The African is its location, so how that plays out in the context of Africa's presence and history and understandings and expressions. So you can't escape then from a discourse or an understanding of colonialism and analysis of what it's done. Uh, understanding of African states as they stand now in the world economy, but also with the, the decisions that they make by Africans of their own choosing around whether or not to actually respect uh, the dignity of the citizens that reside and uh, enable the state to be. Um, it's also about delving deeper into understandings of, again, the diversity of Africanness, but pulling that out too. So to me, feminism is not an academic discourse, and it never has been, and I don't think we should ever root it in its origins with Mary Wollstonecraft or that kind of thing, because actually that's a history of a particular kind of feminism. So for me, the roots of African feminism are deep, because it's any woman that has ever contested patriarchal power and its intersections has asserted an African feminism. And so to me, it's, as I said, varied, but it's deeply rooted in this. It's deeply rooted in being an African who doesn't believe that women uh, should be subjugated and that gender should be an axis of discrimination in the world. You know, it's really interesting. I think um, feminists have almost been erased from the history of Africa and actually the history and understanding of the Africa that we know in any domain. So we often think about political history when we think of Africa, but think about cultural history. Fela Kuti in Nigeria is one of the best known Africans and is still lauded for being transgressive. He was a domestic abuser and he was incredibly, incredibly sexist. His mother, though, was a fierce feminist in Nigeria. And actually, I think even tried to work with him for him to change his views about women. Fela Kuti's consciousness politically, he was a rascal. He was a rascal. He was a troublemaker. Yeah? It was women who actually shaped that rascal sensibility into a political consciousness. It was women that actually contributed to making all the statements against the Nigerian state and all of that. It was women that shaped that consciousness. So I think, as I said, that's just, I wanted to pick an example that's outside of the domain of governance because I think it's also important to consider actually the erasure of those roles that feminists have played in shaping and changing and challenging some of the discourses that we have. 
Um, but I also think too that behind it, most stories of change there's an African woman. Think about the International uh, Criminal Court and the, the context of legal justice in the world when it comes to war crimes. We forget that if it wasn't for the Rwandan women and the Bosnian women, the Rwandan women too, who were willing to step forward and say collectively we had been raped systematically in this genocide. If it wasn't for those individual women, collectively, individually, to come forward and say that, there would be no actually condition in international law that considers rape to be a war crime. So again, when we look at the history of the world, we have to understand how African women have been brave in standing up to say, yes, we've been oppressed, but you know what? It's not going to continue. So to me, that is African feminist contributions. And I think we need to keep unearthing them and we need to keep singing those stories and telling the world that this is a legacy of leadership, of inspiration, of innovation, of transgression that they're as valid as any other legacy and that we need to honor them, we need to know them, we need to tweet them, we need to use them as the symbols of what justice means because African feminists have shaped the world and continue to try and shape the world in an image of something that we might call justice, rights and inclusion. I um, was part of the initial planning process for the what was then the African Feminist Congress in Zanzibar and became the African Feminist Forum. I think I was the youngest person in the room. I must have been about 24, I think, uh, 23. Um, and it was my introduction to a lot of the women that I'd only read about. Because as a student, I was always searching for African feminist voices. So I found Aisha Imam, I found Amina Mama. Those are kind of the only voices I could find anywhere. Um, so it was tremendous to meet them. Um, and the AFF has been through teething problems and all of that, but that's fine, because that's actually the story of life and growth. No? It's always been a space, though, where it's about people being nice to each other. We share a common politics, and that is a politics of inclusion and of critiquing and of sharing something that we value. But it's also been a, a, a forum where we've always tried to say, this is a forum of people who are interested to work together and to try and make things work. And so we've seen it grow, I think, in diversity and in numbers. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing again how it can continue to expand. Access has always been a problem, but it's been difficult. Our continent is enormous. And so how do you convene a regional process in ways that are not expensive? How, I mean, we can't all even get on buses or drive or walk or whatever, because the continent is huge. So how do you convene a regional process like this and make it accessible? Um, so I'm looking forward to thinking through ways of doing that because all of us actually feel that this needs to expand. It is a movement and we're a coalition of different movements um, and we want to see it expand. So I look forward to seeing how we do that while we still carry the politics that we hold central to the AFF um, to ensure that that stays uh, integral and the integrity of that politics stays um, as we include to embrace the so many, many more feminists that live and breathe on this continent. The way forward for African feminists is a big question. It's a big question. I think there are a number of frontiers of struggle in the world or in Africa that we need to contend with. Um, and so one of them I think is around the continued privatization of basic resources and the privatization of the earth. Privatization of seeds. Because we live on the earth and that's where we get our food from and our water from and our capacity to live and survive. And so the African continent is still in a scramble. People are still here taking resources and privatizing with the help of African elites. And for me, I think that at a fundamental level, if you don't even own the seed that grows your food, you've lost your life. I think also that we can't run away now from fundamentalisms which have become violent. And it's not just bombs. The legislation that's proposed in the name of Christianity that's about erasing people's lives is also violent. Discourses that say that people can't walk freely in a street wearing the clothing that they want is also violent. So I think the violent extremism is not just bombs, it's not just terrorism in the way that we've come to understand it or the media has framed it or Western policymakers have framed it. And I think that that's also something we contend with because it's an extreme expression of a certain kind of patriarchal power that we still need to again engage and find a way to, to get it out of people's minds. Because really, fundamentalists have captured popular consciousness and that's the problem.
So I think more deeply popularizing feminist principles, which actually are anti-fundamentalist, because feminist principles are about inclusion and about peace and anti-violent. And I think really tackling this whole issue about our right to own our beings and our right to own our soil collectively and our right to own our own means of production, to me, critical. There are so many African feminist ancestors, it's unfair. If we're talking about sisters that have passed, or sisters that are present, sisters that have passed, I have to say, Freedom Yamubaya, who we honoured today, is a woman that really moved me. Um, I met her in the context of the Zimbabwe Feminist Forum and spent quite a lot of time in the evenings talking. Um, freedom was free. Freedom was free. She'd actually managed to work out how to be free. And I think that, you know, she'd obviously entered a liberation struggle because she already had that inclination. And she had mastered the art of being free. She was a transgressor only because she actually did things that she thought were good. She walked the earth as a woman who was good. Good in the sense of caring for others, good in the sense of constantly questioning things that were wrong, and good in the sense of expanding space for people. Yeah, there's just so many people. There's so many people who are so inspiring. And oh, woman, find your soul And don't let them tell you that this isn't yours Cause you are yours, your voice, your power, your soul Baby, don't let them tell you that this isn't yours Cause you are yours, your voice, your power, your soul your voice, your power, your soul, your soul, your voice, your power, your soul. Oh, oh, woman, won't you find your voice? Say, woman, won't you find your soul? Cause this is yours, oh, baby, you are yours, your voice, your power, your soul. Your voice, your power, your soul